Yeah. Okay. So I think as you guys uh, also know your own progress. So I think one very harsh reality slap that we need to face is uh, this one. Yeah. So uh, apparently we have very low sales one. Yeah. So uh, facing this issue, uh, what's next? Man? Yeah. So definitely uh, need to secure uh, the sales or else our project or events will run without uh, the funding. Yeah, but I think here uh, when I say what's next is more on uh, the upcoming, uh, not upcoming, actually it's right now already, the firefighting plan that we need to work on. Uh. So uh, just to clarify, this isn't the only thing we need to work on for July and also August. Uh, I think some of you guys also written like deliverable innovation uh, very good here. And then also you also need to review your members' uh, competency, uh, all those stuff. But this one would be the most urgent uh, call to action or direction we need to work on first. So definitely, I know some of you guys uh, still have your potential sales, potential IP, like that, they are the potential leads. So really, really uh, continue nurture. Wait, it's not continue nurture, it's close it. Okay, <laughs> yeah, closing the potential IP. Uh, of course, if you have any uh, bottlenecks or uh, things you want to discuss or ask for help on, feel free to always utilize your commission or reach out to me or EST, whoever that you can reach out to. Yeah, and uh, definitely now preparation audit, right? So for IGV side, like, I know Ewa don't have audit, okay? I mean, don't have uh, this kind of audit, yeah. But then uh, one month before means that the project is coming soon like that. So uh, definitely if I say one month before, not to say completely impossible, there are certain FPs that can still work within uh, one month. But if let's say uh, you don't find it uh, feasible for like the current leads that you're talking to or like, uh, the ones that you are still generating to actually have the alignment uh, within one month for uh, FP, then uh, you should pivot it towards sponsorship already instead of FP. So in case you don't know, uh, the difference between the FP and sponsorship is uh, FP is we have deliverables like, for example, you have the employee engagement workshop or the partner come into a keynote, all those stuff. But then sponsorship is the partner that really give you cash. So it's a bit similar like donation. So one thing to also keep in mind is when you are pivoting towards sponsorship direction, uh, the kind of value proposition that you are positioning is uh, very different also because it's like uh, in a way like asking for donation. So it's more on uh, asking the partner if they're interested to support more on this social cost. So when you're running FP sales, you will still highlight the social cost part, but then for the sponsorship part, you need to highlight even more. And uh, when you're running more on uh, sponsorship talking to partner, then the more important materials will then be the deliverables, but it will be more on the cost breakdown on how your project is running like that. Yeah, so based on those cost breakdown, uh, how much do you want the partner to cover? And one tip to take note on is if let's say your project, uh, the cost is let's say 30K, right? Uh, it doesn't mean you find a partner to cover the whole 30K, but then you find a partner to cover like 5K like that. If let's say your whole project cost is 30K. So uh, do keep in mind is when you are, uh, presenting towards uh, this potential partner in terms of uh, how much your project costs. It's not the quotation that you present, but you pre present the actual project cost. And it doesn't make sense for you to ask an amount that is higher than your project cost. Because if I say your project is 30K, you ask for 40K, then what, what do you want to use for the extra 10K, right? Yeah. So it kind of makes sense that you show the full uh, project cost or you position it to be more external friendly because some things your partner may not understand like, a new company like that, yeah. Then uh, you ask for the amount that is within the project cost, okay? Yeah, so using the 30K and 5K as an example. And uh, also at the same time, while you're continuing uh, finding for uh, more leads, uh, actually you're also doing winter lead nurturing also. So regarding how uh, tight the timeline is, actually even right here, right, there's one thing I forgot to map out is actually also have audit. I think it's around here, audit, yeah. So uh, to let you guys know, uh, to be honest, it's really driving on that the urgency is uh, basically winter timeline will be very short and very tight. Lah. So for this one, refer back to last commission call in terms of uh, why I mentioned uh, the thought process on how the winter time is very tight. So uh, the list that you're actually finding right now is actually contributing towards a uh, winter lead nurturing, especially touch wood if you didn't close sales then your August should not August, actually right now should actually really focus on uh, doing the winter uh, sales, but doesn't mean that you cannot close the sponsorship. Yeah. And also at the same time, it's also reviewing the financial goal with your FL. And then also 
uh, financial support with the IGV side in terms of how are you supporting their, them on profit strategy or crowdfunding since now we can't support on sales part like that. So looking into audit, so uh, audit is already marked already, haven't launched the result officially, but you can check your results on the audit tracker already. So in terms of who audit it, uh, you can refer here and then uh, you can reach out to us to ask more in terms of why certain criteria for your site fail like that, or you refer to the notes written there. Yeah, but in terms of uh, those that fail certain criteria, then here actually we have the tool for you to revise the criteria. Okay, so the firefighting plan that need to work on, which is the, all these things that I mentioned, already translated it into a uh, yeah, submission uh, template already. So uh, for the HubSpot part, uh, okay, so HubSpot part is something that you need to do uh, every time you run sales on up. So if you have missing leads on HubSpot, so let's say, for example, okay, for example, you, um, you have 300 leads on your LC tracker, but then uh, HubSpot, you only have 250 leads, means there are 50 leads missing. So that 50 leads missing is actually a very serious issue. I mean, example, only, your actual is not 50. Yeah. So uh, please find out those leads that you didn't put in HubSpot and then update it according to the template here, okay? So here I already uh, removed uh, some of the stuff, but the still important part need to be here. So let's say it's your lead contacted missing this part, then you uh, put it lead contacted here like that for this partner. And then if it's the first meeting, so let's say you conducted a first meeting and then you didn't put in HubSpot, then the missing one, so you can't actually move the HubSpot one like, in the previous state, but you need to put here so I can check on that. So look through which one you're missing already and then document it back. Uh, same with the first meeting criteria, all those stuff also. Then those that fail the partnership formation criteria. So uh, you need to submit the five fighting plan, which is uh, actually this one. Uh. So the potential leads here and then also the context here. Yeah. So it's in terms of the things that I mentioned just now, your potential FPs. So please put down the context here in terms of the potential FPs. And then let's say summer sponsorship that you're aiming for. So sponsorship can still continue to run. Uh, another thing to mention, right, is for sponsorship sales is yours is directly sponsored, like no alignment with IGP. So you can still run it during the project realization, but you start now, right? okay? Yeah. And then uh, with the winter lead nurturing, so all the leads kind of context is just put it here. So if you're already doing your market research in the day-to-day -day process, then it's actually just a copy paste, to be honest. Uh, not exactly copy paste, I mean, I added some things like this goal. Uh, so a bit different. Uh, yeah, and also your reviewed financial goal with FL. So it's not only on uh, the goal that you are putting here, but also, okay, yeah, summer sponsorship, the crop funding, and then also IGB profit st strategy. And then the total one should tally with your uh, total goal itself, uh, revising with uh, the FL site, and then also here is also the context, so the plan that you write down on a qualitative method so that I can revise it like that. Yeah, so I think basically that's all. Any questions for this part? Uh, the results haven't announced officially, so the deadline haven't set yet. Yeah, but I'm letting you guys know earlier. Yeah, no questions. Like there is one uh, uh, Z here. There's one lead. Uh, like it's not. It it we updated in MBSP Bank, but it's not updated in the dashboard. I don't know why. Like it's not locked in the dashboard. Right? Hey, wait uh, This dashboard is manual field in one. It's not a uh, record. It's not linked to your Hello. Okay. Uh, okay. I mean, like like the HubSpot dashboard. Though. Oh, okay. Then that one you private message me. I check with you manually. Right. Yeah, anyone can help simply to make pain. Uh, everyone else, no questions? Okay, thanks, Sunny. Okay, this is not Sunny, right? This is Sunny Sai. I see a sun. I thought it's me. Uh, UNMC, I already audit yours last time already. Yeah. Yeah. I put it. Uh, 
mark already. But on the details, you can check with me individually. Okay. Okay, then let's move towards our next part, uh, Pyongyang 940. Yeah, so a very, very serious firefighting time. Okay, let's move to the next part. Uh. Okay, so here we're going to partnership preparation and management. So uh, mean realization is also coming soon. So yeah, got potential partners, then you'll know on how to manage that. Uh. Yeah, and also for Iowa sales, I know some of you guys already have existing partners uh, working on also. Uh. Yeah, so now we're going to working space. Yeah, so imagine yourself is a partner that is going to work with a youth organization named Isaac, right? So let's say already a uh, sign like this already. Yeah, so uh, what is the end outcome of uh, your partnership? And then how do you define a successful partnership? Uh? And then what needs to be done to achieve your ultimate goal? And then what is the value of behavior to uphold throughout the whole realization or event period? And what will make you not... Uh, what you will make you not want to work with Isaac or not. So I'll bring you guys into the groups. Okay. I was expecting a bit less of it. Okay, yeah. Then the break, you guys, so let me recreate. Okay. Uh, so you guys would discuss with your respective. Uh, okay, let me move some people around. Um, yeah. Okay, so I'll open the rooms now. Okay, welcome back, people. Wow, 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 more and more and good. Okay, yeah, so let's have a round of sharing. Yeah, can have someone share. Isaac, Isaac. Oh, Be and power Isaac. Um, okay, okay. Um, so, um, yeah, um, we're actually from group, group four. Yeah, so um, me, Sunisa, and Kaiming. So we've only like, managed to focus on three. So mainly like um, a successful partnership comprises of actually delivering what uh, what Isaac has promised to do. And secondly, is actually to increase the company's outreach. And thirdly, is to actually um, create a purposeful partnership experience from the impact that we created. So ultimately, to reach, um, to reach all of those aspects, I would say, um, firstly, is to actually set deadline for each delivery, uh, deliverable um, licensing with IGV site to complete what has been promised by us. And secondly, is actually to actually um, to actually constantly give updates and follow up on the progress that we're doing. And lastly, is to actually set expectations earlier and actually understand the values of the partner. Yeah. So, um, yeah, to, um, regarding those, um, the values are ownership on project, um, be transparent to partners, telling them what's going on, open communication, um, also to listen to the partner's needs. And ultimately what we figured out that um, the companies that do not want to work with Isaac anymore, maybe is that because we all promised them on our deliverables that they could not give, um, that actually Isaac could not give what we have promised them. And that maybe our impact is not, do, not, not, that, not that obvious. And that lastly, um, maybe that the company is already doing what they're doing um, compared to Isaac. So like, yeah, the initiative can be done by their, themselves also. So like um, we have actually similar, similar KPI, I would say. So um, yeah, maybe Sunisa, I mean, you need to like chip in if you want to. 
Yeah, that's all for group four. <laughs> Any more to add on? Okay, any other share if you have like something else that wasn't covered by Isaac, you can that. So that's cool. Very good. Yeah. Okay, I think just a few things to uh, also keep in mind. So like uh, what a few other groups also mentioned in terms of the long-term partnership thing. And then more importantly is, uh, yes, we are doing a uh, partnership, but then the end goal of the partnership is not for to do the partnership itself, but then uh, it's to bring in the impact towards uh, our uh, people, which I'll cover later. And when I say people, it's like uh, mainly on our youth side like that. Yeah, so the sustainability of the project, those are the few things on the end outcome that also need to guard. Lah. Yeah, the uh, end impact itself. And also a few things to keep in mind is uh, increased company outreach would be, I would say, uh, maybe AWA more suitable like that, but even for AWA and also uh, IGB related uh, financial partners. Uh, so uh, this can be one of it, but it doesn't mean that the company's main KPI is always this like that. I think I got share in, yeah, which one? Uh, yeah, so okay, this one I got share with a few of you guys, so I just share you guys. So this is like an impact report that uh, I sent to a partner after we finish the initiative, you can just read yourself, but I just briefly brief through. Uh, so it's just a little of the experience sharing that for this partner, right? So we got run a workshop together with the beneficiaries and then after presenting the whole thing, right? So we need a partner only comment on the workshop itself like that. So even though, yes, we do provide the outreach, I mean, the digital marketing uh, outreach site, but then the partner didn't actually ask much. Okay, but for the beneficiary outreach, then they got asked uh, like that, yeah. Uh, if you want to look through, you just look through yourself. Huh? Yeah. And then also on, yeah, the initiative can be done by the company itself. Uh, even in certain situations, let's say the company can do the initiative uh, themselves, they might actually hire Isaac to do also. If let's say Isaac can actually provide a smooth experience, right? And, or let's say provide uh, enough people to help them do like that. So it's a bit like, uh, yes, I can do my homework myself, but then if someone can help me do, why not? Especially if this person can do with a cheaper price or faster or more efficient way, or let's say do my homework uh, in a more quality manner. Let's say the answers are even more accurate like that. And uh, even though I say cheaper price, but it doesn't mean that you need to lower your price uh, because actually considering your nonprofit, actually our cost is actually very low compared to corporate as well. Yeah, but there's more of the sales value proposition and stuff. Huh? Let's come back to partnership preparation. Yeah. So, okay, I just put this logo here like, because I know it's quite hot uh, recently on Instagram, but I think the trend already starting to die already. So, just to let you guys know a not so secret secret, uh, especially if uh, you got run partnership before uh, last pick, then I think you also know that we actually already have guidelines on how to manage partners' experience. Yeah. So, mainly it's the things that's actually put inside a DMF here on the partner standards in terms of what you need to fulfill. Uh, so uh, NCI have different one, then you don't need to follow all of it for NCI, but then for PROX, you need a one, five, and seven, eight standards. And then actually all these things are actually the things that we actually mentioned before in commission call, the things that kind of, it's like common sense, but you know, still need to put that as a reminder. And sometimes uh, we might forget also. Like for example, a need to have the clarification in terms of, okay, uh, what are the deliverables from Isaac's side? And then let's say uh, before the realization start or the deliverable start, then you also need to have a preparation meeting uh, with the partner and then also uh, align on the goals, like set personal professional goals. Yeah, this one. And then also, uh, what's the thing that you guys want to shift together and then afterwards have the closing meeting. So for this one, I wouldn't go into too detail because this one you can uh, read yourself and then uh, look into like, especially when you are doing closing audit, then you know what you need to submit, which is what you need to prepare itself. Huh? And also another thing to actually mention is also on the NPS forms. Yeah. 
So uh, we actually have three NPS forms, pre, mid, and post, uh, depending on the context. The post one is the most important one and the post have the score, but doesn't mean that pre and mid uh, don't need to use. Yeah, in fact, in the partner standard, we also mentioned on the pre and mid. So I think one common question that people have is, wait, why do we need to fill in three NPS forms like that? Uh, mainly it's because actually these uh, NPS form these three is actually for you to better understand the partner state and then you can adapt or work on things differently. Okay, and this is before, like, let's say before you have the preparation meeting and uh, you let partners fill in, then you have the preparation meeting. And then uh, during halfway, like uh, doing the deliverables, let's say you have two workshops, then after doing one, then you can send this also. And then uh, the post is sent afterwards, but it's before closing meeting, like that. So uh, if, I would say if your partner really find it tedious to fill, then the minimum that needs to be filled is post up, but do send all of it because all of it can be utilized. So what do I mean by this? So you don't send the editable version to your partner. Please send the one that uh, is from here. Okay, I think this one, you guys know how to use it. Yeah, but if you go through the uh, questions itself, you can actually know in terms of uh, understanding like, oh, why the partner partner with us? And then what is their uh, expectation before the deliverable start or let's say preparation meeting start and what are the things that you need to take note like that okay, so this is a bit of a promotion, huh? yeah. So, maybe on here, when they fill in, then when you are doing the preparation meeting, okay, let's say they already have certain things want to discuss, then you don't need to wait until the preparation meeting, then discuss and then have another meeting. But then you already have the form, the response here to actually uh, input to prepare the meeting better. Same goes with the mid and post NPS form. So, let me open the post one. So, uh, even at here, right. Yeah, it's the same also is if let's say touch wood, your partner really fill in a low score, then during the uh, closing meeting, you also know that, okay, uh, for this partner, their experience is not that good, then, okay, I need to know what are the things that I need to discuss and get from them, uh, like that. And then you can also recap uh, their experience like that also. Yeah, maybe on here. And you can check the form responses here, which is actually like, put inside the uh, commission folder already. Uh. Yeah, so, uh, but, uh, one thing to actually let everyone know also is uh, this is just the minimum checklist in handling the partner experience. Uh. You're always encouraged to go to extra mile uh, with your team to maximize the value of your partnership. But I know for UPM, you guys actually send newsletter to your partners, uh, all those stuff like that. Yeah, so if you have any ways or anything that you want to do to actually engage your partner better, uh, feel free to always do so. And in fact, I remember uh, back then, uh, like in 2019, when I was a VP, uh, then we actually uh, go to have a dinner to chit chat with the partner to actually catch up with them. Uh, also, it was a long term partner, uh, yeah, but even not for a long term partner, uh, you can also look into whether this is something that can explore or not. Uh, yeah, so uh, you guys also discuss with me, and you guys uh, have, I would say, like discussion with each other, and then everyone has different input, right? Yeah. So mainly on here, combine what you discuss with uh, what is written in the partner standards to actually must uh, maximize the partnership experience uh, to actually recap yeah, what you can do. I would say is uh, the thing that you can actually start on working now is also mapping out an action plan of your partner's uh, experience until the end of the realization and after actually, uh, until after the realization. Okay. Yeah, yeah. After the, yeah. So because after realization, you also need a closing meeting and also re-raise the partner. So uh, it always helps to actually map out the plan, the timeline itself. Uh, and also set a routine with your team constantly. So uh, like maybe your team have their own things also, right? But uh, do need to set a routine, like send a Google Calendar and uh, always constantly engage them, like be very responsive and then also avoid the confusion. Uh. So in terms of the confusion here, uh, it's just very normal that uh, sometimes we may uh, miscommunicate things or people just misunderstood uh, what we are talking about. So also uh, always have the intention to understand what could be partners' misunderstandings or maybe to have certain needs like that. Yeah. So uh, at the end of the day, it's only when we deliver the good experience to partner, then we can embrace them and then also create more impact for our people. Uh. So when I say uh, the impact for our people, I would say it's for our youth, definitely the main target audience because we are a youth organization, right? Uh, to build more youth leadership so that they can experience, uh, have practical experience in challenging environment. But definitely for IGV side, you have your beneficiaries also, Ewa, maybe some of you guys have, and also the membership because while you, and your members are running these whole things, you're actually learning a lot of uh, professional experience in terms of working with uh, different organizations, different corporates, and you actually get to yeah, learn about this and you get a better experience. Huh? And of course, as the team leader, LCP, 
director uh, do facilitate your members' experience also. Uh, like after they do, okay, what did I learn? Even though the partner is uh, got this problem, okay, I hope uh, your part partner all do have problem. Uh. <laughs> okay, yeah. So uh, always keep in mind in terms of, uh, I would say, maybe these three values, yeah, the consistency, uh, being transparent, and always put 101% of effort. Uh. Yeah, so maybe that's all for this part. And yeah, I think we actually uh, ended early. Yeah, for this part. So any questions? Uh, I have a question. Is there any BCP yeah, from the partnership management? Yeah, and then what is the way forward? Is it like apologizing and then that's all, etc. Or like trying to make up BCP, mm. yeah, bad, bad case practice. BPC, yeah, somebody I need to think of one. Mm. It's me some time, BCP. But if anyone has, can share also. Yeah, this is this is a very uh okay, not very like more on actually what happened, like, but a bit shameful to say about it. So actually had uh how say so this is actually starting from before sign MOA already. Like. So uh on on my end, uh there was this one time I worked with a partner, then uh before sign MOA, actually the partner got add on on one deliverable. Then actually that deliverable is like I mean, the add-on one is not uh not what we originally uh discussed one uh, then uh, but I think that deliverable is something that how say is all oh, also achieve the end goal uh, of the partnership itself. Like they they wanted us to actually coordinate with the school and then also uh help them like uh recycle on things like that. Yeah. Then mainly uh the plan was thinking of okay we coordinate with the school to actually do uh recycling. Then uh, the school handle the uh, recycling process itself. So mainly we only let the school uh, have, I would say, take action only. Uh, but then the school didn't know how to, uh, like, don't have a specific place for them to recycle the waste like that. Then uh, actually, this, this PCP is on two sides. Uh, one is school side, one is the financial partner side. So the school side is when you communicate to them, they actually expect us to actually uh, recycle the I was saying re recycle the waste, like help them collect. Then for the partner side, actually, their side, uh, they were okay that we didn't recycle in the end, like, even though they initially proposed. And then along the way, uh, found out that actually the school had a misalignment on this expectation. Okay, then uh, I decided to uh, find other, I was saying, uh, NGOs to help support in terms of the recycling process like that. Yeah, but then uh, while finding the uh, recycling process, then the waste also uh, got piled up more and more. Like, then the schools were quite angry. And then in the end, the partner actually uh, step, I mean, uh, take over to actually handle this. So the, I would say, yeah, the, the partner uh, originally is they wish that we can do. Like, but then I think at that time when I promised them this deliverable, then uh, like didn't really review through whether we can deliver or not. Then in the end, it's the partner decided to uh, take over and then uh, they, I think they spend their own money to actually uh, collect the waste and then recycle it. So I think this part, uh, I actually kind of got away with it that the partner was okay, that uh, okay, the partner just took over and then the partner didn't score us or anything. I think the partner was kind of fine, okay, that uh, what we proposed was initially what we proposed like that, but I think, on here, maybe the BCP part is not to overpromise. Yeah, not to overpromise in the first place, and then also uh, at the same time, like the promise one also need to keep track because I think that part is uh on one end is delivering workshop, the other end is ensuring school can recycle things. But then while I'm focusing on the workshop thing, then neglected the part of the recycling partner. Like that so uh for the promise one already align one a bit one, then also need to ensure that. Uh, you have uh, people in charge of it and the progress is ongoing. I can only share on this one. If anyone else thought, can also share.
Okay, I mean, I, I know you highlight the what uh, uh, keep track of everything. Okay, okay. Yeah, I need to keep track of progress now. Hey, no more questions, people. If you know question, you can put a phone. Hi, we are so quiet today. I'm not used to it. I'm very scared. <laughs> Sorry, Eugene. I have I'm very clueless in this area. Um, I think this part is really the practical experience. Huh? Yeah, you got the Okay, but I would say uh, the things that you guys can think about is yeah, the kind of the things that you keep in mind. Uh, that I think it's just on the implementation, whether we are implementing the part in terms of, let's say, resourceful and then being accountable, all those stuff also. Yeah, so I think that's all. And then okay, again, the commission t-shirt and then the what? Uh, the MyODS is coming soon, so you can get your t-shirt immediately. So yeah, oh, also, I forgot to put the post of the MyODS. Wait, let me post it now since we have time. Uh, wait, uh, actually, I sent the message in the broadcast also. Yeah, today we ended early. Okay, maybe because today is also not that heavy. Uh. Uh, yeah, I'm conference manager of my ideas. I, want. I buy ever one day, no, no money to buy. Uh, can, can save money one. Is yeah. Like one day drink less, uh, one less coffee. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So here's the poster. Yeah. So you guys can register also. So uh, to to let you guys know, right? Normally conference uh, the the pricing itself, the t-shirt is extra extra charge one, meaning it's two hundred fifty, and then the t-shirt is another twenty five. But this time, right? They got two promotion. You know, it's like the t-shirt is within the two hundred fifty already, and then here you actually uh go get to go to explore around to you. So uh, I mean, I don't know uh, how are you guys like uh, thought for me when I was back then still in uni, I'm very excited to go to conference, uh, honestly. It's like you go to university, it's not only to study at the university. Right? I mean, everyday study also very boring. It's like you get to go to other universities and then get to explore in terms of, oh, how their university look like and then get to meet a lot of different people from other places also. And that's why we like commission and that's why we like to go conference like that. So really, really sign up for this uh, physical conference. You definitely wouldn't regret it, okay? Like we have Bunga here as the host, I mean, host LC to tell you how good it is. And then also Sunisa is also the OC team, okay? <laughs> Selling it up. No, but, but the, the experience is really very good. Uh. Like the number one reason why I stay in Isaac is because of conference. And you can go to my Instagram, like you scroll down. Maybe later I share the picture. Uh. Like I save a lot of my conference uh, goodie merchandise. Uh, it's all the memories itself. Yeah, maybe later I share in the group chat. Uh. Yeah, uh, so that's all for my DS. Register, okay? Yeah, and then also bring your other people to actually yeah. register also. And you get to see me in person. <laughs> yeah, I think that's all for today's call. Uh. Okay, so you can put down the feedback, I'll play some music.